When you're getting started as a designer, it can be extremely tricky to understand which software do you actually need to use for your work and which software do you need to pick and start learning. And that can be extremely difficult, especially if you're getting started because you have this variety of tools that you can use for the work, but you don't know where to start. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. First things first, each software has its use. So some tools are image editing software, for example, some tools are vector editing software, other tools are UI UX dedicated software, other software are for drawing and so on. So it's really important to focus on what you do or what you want to be doing in the future and then find the tool that suits you. So there are a variety of other tools, but it's important to know that majority of these tools work basically the same. In majority of them, you have the tool to move around different objects. You have the text tool, you have different shapes to pick from. So it's really important to understand that once you get to know one tool, it's going to be really simple to understand all of these different tools. All you need to do is simply dive deep and explore more features of that tool, which is important to you and your work. Next thing you need to note is free versus paid. Majority of tools out there have at least free version. So in majority of them, you have a free trial which lasts for seven days. And after the free trial ends, you have to pay for that software. Trials are great because you can test out the software and see if it's good fit for you and your business or what you want to be doing in your career. And then once the trial ends, you get to decide if you want to buy that product or not. Some tools are free forever, but it's important to understand if the tool is free, in vast majority of cases, it's the thing, it's not really all that versatile, which means that you cannot use it for uh, advanced workflows, for example, when you start working professionally in this field. So it's important to note if you are into this as a hobby, then don't pay for software, simply go for the free version and try to test it out or a free forever version, for example, and then work inside of that software. If your job is just to edit images, don't pay for software. Simply find a free tool out there and edit images. You can use this uh, variety of different online tools and you also have tools which you need to install on your machine and then work on it. But if you want to do this professionally, then just note that you will have to pay for software. In majority of cases, not just one, but sometimes a bunch of different software that you need to use in your work. So free versus paid is the same in everything. It's great to get started as a free version or as a free tool, but once you start moving up in your career, once you start exploring and learn a bit deeper about this design field, you will understand that you need to purchase a software, at least one, but in some cases, a whole bunch of different softwares, which are going to help you increase your speed and improve your workflow and simply earn more money as a designer at the end of the day when you get to use these paid tools. Next tip is choose the tools you actually need. In majority of cases, you're going to need image editing tools because the vast majority of the work you are doing as a designer is consisting of images. So whether it's UI UX work or some other graphic design work, you are going to use images most of the time, especially if you are in UI UX field. So if you're on a budget or if you're just getting started, free tools are a great option just to explore this. Also, if you're working with vectors, make sure to understand that you also have free and paid versions. So depending on your work and what you want to be doing inside of your career, then try to find the tools which fit the best for you. Also, dedicated tools are created for dedicated operating systems. So for example, Sketch is a tool which is the Mac only, you cannot get the PC version. While Figma, for example, is a tool that works on both Mac and PC and also works online. So just try to find the tool that fits the best for you and your use and just make sure to understand that you are going to have to jump between these different tools to finish the work that you're doing. 
Adobe is most well-known company in this design field and they have the vast variety of different products that you can use. They also have subscriptions, so once you pay for that subscription, you have access to all of these other tools. And the best thing about Adobe and its tools is that they all seamlessly integrate between each other. So for example, if you're working on an image in Photoshop, you can bring it into Adobe XD, then from Adobe XD, you can prototype it, bring it online and so on, then perhaps you can use that prototype in Adobe After Effects if you want to polish up uh, those prototypes and so on. Well, you cannot do this in other tools. For example, Affinity Designer is great if you want to edit images, for example, perhaps even work with some vectors, but what if I need to edit some videos? I'm stuck, so I have to pay for another additional software which is not related to Affinity, so I will have to learn that software as well, which slows me down. It costs me more money because I'll have to pay for both of those softwares. You get the idea. So it's really important that you understand and that you focus on what you are doing inside of your business and then learn those tools and pay for those tools if necessary. Or if you are on a tight budget or you simply don't want to pay for software, then you can choose free tools. But in my opinion, Adobe is the best version out there because they simply have everything you can possibly imagine or possibly need as a designer and then you can simply integrate seamlessly between all of these tools. Let's say you're working in Illustrator on icons for example, then you can bring those icons into Photoshop and simply make a mock-up of them for example for your UI design work, then bring that mock-up into XD, maybe you can prototype it there, then simply extract it from there, bring it into After Effects and so on. So they have this great workflow that have been doing it for a few decades now and they are simply the best in the business when it comes to creative tools. And finally, what to pay for and what to avoid paying. If you test the tool and you like it and you think it's going to bring you value and you work and uh, working as a designer, then you can go ahead and pay for it. But make sure that you are going to use it because it's really easy to get stuck with the tool and to get stuck with the subscription, for example, and never use the tool and simply pay for the tool that you're not going to use ever. That's simply a waste of money and a waste of your time because you are investing all of this time and money into this tool that you're never going to use. So make sure to understand which tools you are actually going to use, which tools you actually need for your business and which tools cost money and which tools are free because sometimes you can get away with some free tools and some paid tools to save some money. So make sure to understand your workflow, what works best for you and your business and then move on with the tools because these tools can end up costing you a lot of money if you're not careful, especially over the years because you have been thinking, oh, okay, maybe I can buy this tool, maybe I can buy this tool to help me with this, to help me with that and then you can see simply st get stuck with this massive bill of the tools that you're never using, paying them at the end of the year when you can invest that money in your business, perhaps in your knowledge, maybe you can hire somebody to help you and so on. Thank you for watching the video, I really hope you got some value out of it. If you did, make sure to press that like button. I upload new videos every single week on design, passive income techniques, motivation and more. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.